Hello there friends and welcome for today's Pathfinder guide we have an Arcane Enforcer Dual Wielder Tiefling build. It's my first time ever covering this very fun archetype. And as if any good dual wielding build you of course have an enormous amount of attack spell rounds to easily slice and dice through multiple enemies at once, with uber sneak attack damage too. We have a max of 13 attacks per round, not counting attacks of opportunity which you excel at of course, together with around 200 damage on sneak attacks, and even up to 500 on critical hits. Even outside of sneaks you can still do around 100. And the best part is every single one of your strikes will also first drain the enemy's strength and constitution and even automatically dispel them for you. Last but not least, while this build won't have the ultimate AC possible, it still has plenty enough, even at the early stages of the game, for a very fun and smooth playthrough. So without further ado, let us get into our Arcane Enforcer Dual Wielder build. Arcane Enforcer is actually a Slayer archetype, which is great because, well, Slayer by itself is one of the most solid classes in the game and you do retain most of its powerful features, such as the Slayer Talents, you only lose a few, full sneak attack, and also study target progression for even higher damage and AB. Even the advanced talents too. Now, its main unique features is combining the Arcanist exploit abilities with all of your Slayer package. Some of the exploits can be quite handy for a martial character, especially when it comes to extra defense, such as from Wooden Flash, Arcane Barrier, Armored Mask, and even higher utility through Dimensional Slide. The others are mostly for minor spell damage, which don't really matter for this build. However, we won't start the game as an Arcane Enforcer, right? First, let's go with Rogue and Knife Master. Just one level is enough, mostly for the Sneak Stab ability, which will enhance all of our Sneak Attack dice to the 8. With Kukris and Daggers, mostly Kukris because they are the best dual wielding weapon in the game for the highest critical range. You also start with one dice of sneak attack which can help proc the study target ability from Slayer. For race, as always I prefer human but this time you'll be going with Tifling just so I get to use this very cool portrait which is quite fitting for this build. But honestly anything goes, you won't be lacking feats as a Slayer. For your Tifling heritage go with Rakshasa's pawn after all, you get bonuses to Dexterity, our most important stat, and also Charisma, which can help with some of your Arcane Enforcer exploit abilities. Lastly, you even gain damage reduction. It's just a minor form of it, but can help early game, where enemies don't tend to deal high damage. You'll get 2 Penetrable by Piercing, which means 2 points of damage shaved from Slashing and Bludgeoning, the most common and most dangerous damage types, right? Piercing is mostly only for ranged enemies. For the background, well, we are a Thiefling and a Rogue, so Street Urchin and Pickpocket, of course, for even higher initiative when combined for Dexterity, this way you can catch enemies flat-footed for lower AC on the first round of battle. Now, for ability points, Dexterity will be your most important stat. I honestly prefer Strength, but through Knife Master at least we'll get Weapon Finesse for free at level 1 to apply our Dexterity mod to attack rolls. Anyways, 20 dexterity is the way to go, as you'll also be going legend later on. This way you'll have maximum AC and attack rolls, even at level 1. Together with just 12 strength is enough for carrying capacity and... So you get extra minor damage anyways to your melee attacks, because by default, you only get to apply dexterity to damage at, well, around level 7 during mythic level 2. Then 14 constitution just should be safe. And I would go with 11 Intelligence, just so you can cast your Alchemist Vivisection spells, which you'll be picking soon enough. But it's not really necessary, later you just have gear that will enhance your intelligence anyways. You can also dump it if you prefer and start with higher Charisma. Wisdom doesn't matter much. Now for skill points, the Dexterity skills of course, as a classic Rogue, Mobility, Trickery, Stealth, also one point into Use Magic Device. And the rest is up to you, might as well pick Athletics or Perception, as you do get a bonus from it by being a Rakshasa spawn Tifling. Now for level 1 feats, because you'll be dual wielding, after all we have loads of sneak attack, 
from Knife Master Slayer and Vivisectionist together with the boost from Sneak Stab. We want as many attacks as possible to apply our sneak, so pick two weapon fighting at the start. For dating any that allows the chaotic alignments, we will be a trickster first, which I'm afraid is the most optimal choice for this type of character, after all we are a tiefling and a rogue. I'll just go with Calistria and any chaotic alignment, chaotic good tends to be the best pick. For level 2 you have two choices, you can already get started into Slayer, an Arcane Enforcer of course, but I'd much rather get one extra level into Alchemist and Vivisectionist. This way we get an extra dice of sneak attack, but most importantly the Mutagen, right? Which is very OP on its own. It will not only increase your dexterity by plus 4, which is huge for plus 2 to attack, but also double that to armor class, from dexterity and the plus 2 stacking natural increase. While it's only going to last 10 minutes at level 1, it's still plenty for a lot of content. Later we'll get more levels into it. For skills, keep increasing mobility, trickery and stealth. And for the vivisection spells, which is why I started with 11 intelligence, shield can help a lot, I mean, early on you'll only have 1 minute duration, but it helps against the tough battles or boss battles, for a huge plus 4 extra to AC, and there's always true strike. The other ones don't matter for this build outside of reduced person. Level 3 is when I would get into Arcane Enforcer at last. And for a feat, weapon focus into Kukris, right? We get Kukri proficiency from Slayer, and this can help you overcome the dual wielding penalty from two weapon fighting. Now for your first exploit, my preferred pick is Wooden Flash because it's the most unique of them all without a doubt. It will not only increase your armor class by a stacking plus 2, natural, which means it will stack with other sorcerers of natural AC like the Mutagen or the Bark Skin spell, but it even grants you minor damage reduction equal to your Charisma modifier against both piercing and bludgeoning. It's just minor like the Rakshasa ability, but it can help early on. While it takes a while for the duration to get good, it's 1 minute per Enforcer level, you have multiple uses of it anyways. You can also go with Armored Mask, which replicates the Mage Armor spell and also Shield of Faith. It's just that, well, you can get the spells from other sources, right? Wooden Flash, not really. And there's also Dimensional Slide, which lets you teleport. It kinda helps more in turn-based, because in real time with pause you have way more movement potential. I'd rather Wooden Flash, though, to increase our armor class to the max. After all, we have plus 2 from it, plus 4 from the Mutagen, and then plus 5 from our dexterity, so you're stacking quite a lot of AC early on. Together with great AB too, and sneak attack. So you're decent at tanking and great at damage and attacks too. From level 4 onwards, resume progression into Arcane Enforcer. Of course, if you want even higher AC early, you can go with Witch, then grab the Ice Plant Hacks together with the Lizard Familiar. I just don't think it's necessary unless you were playing on Unfair. It's something you can do, however. Otherwise, just return to Arcane Enforcer. Then at level 4, increase Dexterity, the same for all the other levels. For level 4, Combat Style and 2 Weapon Combat. We already have the normal 2 Weapon Fighting, but we need this to get the other ones for free. And in the spirit of having decent armor class, let's go with Dodge now. Then at level 5, be sure to pick Combat Reflexes. It can help a lot when you have high Dexterity, and this is a must-have for when you get out flank and the Trickster Critical Feats later anyways. We won't have the space for it until much later now. For your second exploit, my preferred pick is Arcane Barrier, because it will provide you with temporary hit points, which are great and work as another layer of defense on top of your already high armor class. Because it's cast as a swift action, you can even use this during battle, when you most need it right before receiving an attack that could potentially kill you. And you also have many uses of, of it because of your arcane pool. For level 7, at last and as always, outflank, a must have for any mini build, especially dual building characters. And just in time for your other medium base attack bonus characters too. For level 8, combat style, 2 weapon combat and improved 2 weapon fighting for the second offhand attack. For level 9, you have 2 options. You can go with Piranha Strike now for higher damage, after all it's applied to both your weapons and we have amazing dexterity. Or there's also the lunge feat, which will provide you with reach. I just don't think it's that necessary for this build, because we have good enough armor class anyways, especially if you went with the witch multi-class, so Piranha Strike is the way to go for me. After all, lunge will reduce your AC by 2. 
but you can pick it if you want. For the third exploit, well, now you might as well go with Dimensional Slide, just for extra movement if needed, or Armored Mask if you prefer, but like I said, you can just have Summon Cast Mage Armor and Shield of Faith on you instead. Even Potions of Mage Armor scrolls too. Dimensional Slide at least does something unique. For level 10, Combat Trick, and Improved Critical at last, Kukri's of course. Now for level 11, as with any Trickster build, if you rush for Trickster Mythic 4, which you can do easily, I mean, it just takes skipping time until you get the Trickster quests at Chapter 3, be sure to grab the Perception 1 and 2 Mythic Tricks, and then I would return to Vivisectionist. This way, right at level 11, because of the Vivisectionist bonus talent, we can grab both the first Trickster Mythic Critical Feat, together with Combat Trick and the second one, just in time. This way, at this point in the game, we'll already have maximum Kukri critical range for 11 to 20 criticals, which is quite a lot when you consider dual wielding and sneak attacks. And of course, on every critical hit, you'll also provide free attacks to all nearby allies throughout flank. For another vivisection spell, it doesn't matter, right? You're just using shield for AC or true strike for higher AB. Ideally before battle, of course. Now I would resume progression into Arcane Enforcer, because the advanced talents you'll be getting pretty soon can help your build quite a lot. For level 13 you have two choices, you can grab Greater to Weapon Fighting now, but I'd much rather the last Trickster feat for even higher critical damage, especially because as a legend you can't afford Mythic Critical. The extra exploits from now on don't really matter, you already have the best ones by far. What you can do is pick Armored Mask now, just so you don't have to rely on allies for both Mage Armor and Shield of Faith. At level 15, go for Greater to Weapon of Fighting for the last offhand attack, because while you can get this from a Slayer talent, I'd much rather pick an Advanced talent now instead of a Combat Style one. In this case, you have three choices. The best ones being Dispelling Attack, if you want to dispel enemies with your attacks, and well, we have a lot of them when dual building. Opportunist for an extra melee attack per round, or Wearing Strike for the Constitution debuff, which can reduce the enemy's hit points too per strike. We'll actually have space for all of them, it's just a matter of personal preference as what you want first. I would rather get the spelling attack, because it's applied on every hit you have, and at this point, chapter 4 enemies start coming with a lot of pre-buffs, chances are you will dispel some of their effects. But it's up to you, you can also pick the other two ones now. And by the way, it's actually not based on your enforcer level, rather, your full complete levels, right? Since you'll be going Legend, you'll have, what, 40 at the end game? It's enough to dispel everything with complete ease. For another exploit, like I said, it doesn't matter anymore, but you might as well pick Spell Resistance, because it's the only one that does something for this build. For level 17, because you'll soon become a Legend at 19, you might as well pick the remaining special Trickster feats as usual. First, Stat Focused, and you can choose two of them, right? You have Armor class, attack, or damage. I do believe you have enough bonuses to damage, so I'd rather pick attack now, together with a second advanced talent. And remember, either opportunist or wearing strike. The only issue with wearing strike is some bosses are immune to ability damage, but most enemies aren't. I'd rather opportunist now, for the extra attack. For level 19, the last trickster feat. Choose between AC or damage, I'll be going with AC. And the greater spell resistance, exploit. Now you'll already be at level 20, and as a legend you'll get like 15 levels added at once, for up to 34 or so, right at the same time. You don't necessarily need to keep into Arcane Enforcer, but if you go until level 21, you'll have the last advanced talent together with the last sneak attack increase, which I think it's worth it. Plus we have so many levels as a legend anyways. So at level 21, well, we might as well get started into the Shattered Defenses package now, because we don't really have space for it earlier as a trickster, due to all the special feats. In this case, Dazzling Display. Then the last advanced talent, Wearing Strike. Or you can also go for the Familiar, and then Hair, for a plus 4 to Initiative, but we have enough Dexterity, or Lizard for an extra plus 1 stacking bonus to AC, it's up to you what you prefer. Now, as I explained before, there isn't much of a point into increasing Slayer to 20, it's just the last study target. I would much rather resume progression into Vivi's section is now for the increases to the Mutagen, and you still get extra feats anyways. Together with extra sneak dice, of course, as a legend, you can really max it out. 
As for level 23, Shatter Defenses at last. Together with Feral Mutagen, as this will provide you with an extra bite attack. Once again, just like the Gore from the Demonic Ascension, Sneak Attack can be applied to this. For more vivisection spells, please remember that I already have a guide covering all the best spells in the game, so I'll just keep it simple. But False Life is great, for even more temporary hit points which can be stacked with Hurricane Barrier ability. Then grab anything else you want now, like Blur, Animal Aspect, Bark Skin, Aid. You can also use Scrolls to learn spells as a vivisectionist. Oh, and by the way, at level 17 and 19 you can also pick the completely normal Metamagic Trickster spell if you prefer. It's just that it takes us a long time to get a lot of spells, only during Legend progression, so I don't think it's that necessary. Anyways, for level 25, improved initiative at last, kinda late, but we have enough dexterity to compensate. Together with Feral Wings for even higher AC. Any spells. At 26, well, haste is always amazing, but it's so late in the game now. Don't forget greater animal aspect and displacement, and protection from arrows communal too. For 27, grab Hammer the Gap, and then you might as well pick Infusion Rise to cast your alchemy spells on allies, because at least at this point, you have some decent spell casting. Animal Aspect is always great for this purpose, to proc Master Shape Shifter on allies, together with Shield of course for higher AC, even True Strike can work on allies. Anyways, grab Displacement now, then Greater Aspect here, and for your feet at 29, Double Slice at last. I just don't think the benefits are that useful for most of the earlier parts of the game, which is why I delayed it. Then, well, since you got all the nice debuffing abilities from the talents, right? Wearing Strike, Dispelling Attacks, why not prick Crippling Strike? It's not necessary because it only reduces the enemy's strength and chances are you'll kill them before it matters, especially because of Wearing Strike and your high critical damage, but why not? It's fun, right? To debuff the enemies with so many abilities. Just understand you don't have to pick this if you don't want. You can always grab another feat. But as a legend, we have enough to spare. For level 4, we this section is spells first, Greater False Life, also great to cast on allies. And then Echolocation, which can help bypass consumment for level 31. Toughness because of the higher synergy with the double legend levels. And at last, Greater Mutagen for even higher dexterity, together with Greater Invisibility. Level 5 alchemy spells are kinda poor, just go with Stone Skin Communal or Spell Resistance. For level 33, I mean you can always pick Lunge if you want, or earlier. As I explained before, there's also Blind Fight, which can help at least against the enemies that have consumed sources not bypassed by True Seeing or Echolocation, but these enemies are very, very few in number. You can count them in one hand. But since we have the Feast to Spare, why not, right? We even got another feat now from Vivisectionist. Something fun you can do now is, because you already have boosts to your strength from gear, you can grab power attack just so you get cleave and cleaving finish for extra attacks later, I mean, you have the fist to spare, so why not? Any other level 5 spell, then cleave at 35, together with Grand Mutagen. Level 6 vivisection spells are kinda good, ideally what you want is transformation, not to cast on yourself because they nerfed this with legend and the extra levels, but on allies, especially pets or allies that don't have high base attack bonus. And you can do it because of the infusion ability. Then heal, legendary proportions, or even dragon kind to turn pets or allies into dragons if you want, it's up to you. At 37, cleaving finish. Together with combat trick, great cleave. Any other spells like I mentioned before. And at last, improved cleaving finish, which can matter for a dual wielding build. Together with True Mutagen, the alchemist capstone ability for even more OP bonuses. The other discoveries are up to you, you might as well pick Preserve Organs, or one of the potion abilities. Well, we are already at max vivisectionist, so what you can do now is the classic Ranger and Demon Slayer, just for the extra plus two against demons, for both attack and damage, which can matter. Of course, we have more than enough bonuses as it is, and if you went with the Witch multiclass way earlier for higher AC, you wouldn't have this level, but it doesn't matter, because you already have the best vivisectionist and Arcane Enforcer abilities anyways. So it's up to you. You can even grab Witch now for higher ACs, just that we are very late game. Now let us cover Mythic Progression for our Arcane Enforcer Dual Wielder. Close to the Abyss is the best pick as a first ascension because it's even more attacks, right? And sneak attack can be applied to this. As far as Mythic Level 1, my preferred choice is Last Stand. Because it's one of the most unique and most useful abilities and, well, 
you are the main character, if you die it's a game over, with this you pretty much never die. Of course you already have a great amount of armor class, so it's not really necessary, but since you'll be going legend later and you only have mythic level 1 and 2, I do think last stand is the best pick. Otherwise you can also pick master shapeshifter, but it will take a while before you have ways of proccing it on yourself. There's always a chance, and even abundant casting too. I do think last stand is the most bang for your buck, if you know what I mean. As for mythic level 2, well, the penalty of being a dexterity character is that we have to pay the dexterity tax. While we were able to get weapon finesse for free, there is no such thing when it comes to mythic finesse for dual wielders, so we kinda have to pick it now, especially as a legend. It's a bit sad because you won't get mythic piranha strike, but we have enough extra sneak attack damage to compensate anyways. And well, legends don't get a mythic level 3, but... Now let's get into the trickster progression for most of the game anyways, until you become a legend. Last stand, mythic weapon finesse, then at mythic 3, ever ready without a doubt, together with the arcana 1 trick at mythic 4, mythic critical into kukris and the perception 1 and 2 tricks. These are the most important levels. From mythic 5 onwards, it's up to you. But depending on your party members, master shape shifter or mythic charge can both help. And there's also Archmage Armor if you want higher AC, but you'll lose it upon becoming a legend. And at Mythic 6, you could go for Mythic Piranha Strike. 7 and 8 are very close to each other and, well, you'll become a legend anyway, so they don't matter. Alright, now let's discover gear for our Dual Builder Tifling Enforcer. For the amulet, as always, Valexius, for the highest dexterity possible. Earlier, you can just use amulets that increase initiative. For armor, you don't actually want to wear armor because of your huge dexterity modifier, so just go with Haramakis as to not interfere with bonuses to AC. Divine Guidance is usually the best to really increase all of your saving throws. Something you can do, however, if you want to min max dexterity, go with the Web Strider padded armor to increase it by plus 4, but of course that will tank your AC. Although, depending on the difficulty you're playing ahead, 70 is plenty enough as you'll also have other layers of defense, like temporary hit points. For shirt, wandering common as usual for any character focused into attacks of opportunity. For belts, our dance belt is as always the best pick late game, but before that, belts that enhance dexterity and constitution. For gloves, fencer's gift for the extra dual wielding damage to the offhand. And boots as always run X sacrifice for the maximum dexterity boost possible, it also increases your AC. For helmets, most don't matter much for this build, but eventually the Hat of the Bitter End is definitely a great pick, it can increase your attack rolls by a lot, which does matter because of how many attacks per round you have when dual wielding. Then as far as glasses, you can just combine it with the Broken Trickster as usual, while you don't really need Wisdom and Charisma, the secondary tanking property this provides you can be good when needed. Just Cloaks of Resistance with the highest modifier, together with the Ring of Triumphant Advance to double all moral bonuses. And I also like the Ring of Evasion because we didn't get it from Rogue. And we have such a godly amount of Reflex that it's very easy to evade most enemy spells. As far as Braces, just Braces of Armor to increase our AC since we can't really wear actual armor for that purpose. Alright, now let's cover weapons and quick slots. I decided to go with Kukris because they are, first, a light weapon which means less penalties when dual wielding, just a minus 2 to the offhand. Second, they are also the light weapon with the highest critical range possible, so when combined with a trickster, even when going into legend, we have pretty much higher than 50% critical chance. <laughs> Considering how many attacks we have per round, that's a lot. And the vast majority of enemies in Wrath do not resist critical hits or sneak attacks. The best cool creature to me is the Shock Flaming Corrosive one you find at the laboratory area during Chapter 3. While it is true most enemies will resist the triple elemental damage, you can easily overcome that by just spamming the Bane of Spirit Wing to convert it all to irresistible, which by the way just happens to be conveniently at the same chapter you can find that Kukri. For the offhand, you can go with Finion earlier. But eventually the Astringent Pacifier for the 2d6 extra corrosive damage on hit, also irresistible. Although you might find the fear aura this gives you on Q somewhat annoying. You can always just go with the last version of Finion. For a quick slot is the usual package, we have the Lucky Dice, Jarsigax for extra damage, Lesser Extend Rods for your VP section spells, Trusted Friend as Legend Exclusive, the Signet for any skill, 
Don't forget Bismuth the Dinosaur too, this way you can get a pet, even if we didn't go with a pet class. And you definitely have enough charisma and use magic device to use any scroll in the game you want for extra versatility. Well alright friends, so this was it for my Arcane Enforcer build and guide, if you found it useful as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support, thank you for watching and see you next time friends.